Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic and <laughs> let's see how many brands do I have in here. This is Pro Star, Pro, Iso Sensation. We got the Nutrient Muscle Way in here. I just picked up the one that I could find uh, close to my hand. Nothing special about those. Uh, why am I talking about this? Because these are really popular brands and they're selling really well. I think so because I get Instagram posts as well as in the comment section. If you scout my comment section, you're going to see so many people who asked, are these amino spiked? And I tried to do a video on a few of those, but um, not all of those. So I thought, I actually talked to a few people, a few of my viewers, and I tried to understand and they were talking things. And I realized that uh, there is a big uh, chunk of misconception that's floating around YouTube and specifically Indian YouTube because uh, there's not a particular one person or somebody, uh, people are spreading wrong knowledge. Now, am I spreading the right knowledge? It's for you to find out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Go find out if I'm saying whatever I'm saying is right or wrong. So, what we're going to talk about is amino spiking. Now, it's a, it's a huge misconception that's being floating around in YouTube and people are just handpicking any product like this or this or anything like this and say, oh, you know, this is a minor spike. This is a minor spike. And a few things. First, you can't tell if it's a minor spike um, just by looking at the product or just by because you think it's a minor spike. Okay, there is a test for that. And I inquired from the place I do my tests. So they said 23,000 to 25,000, depending on um, the how many tests do I want to do. I do more, they're going to give me some discount, but that's costly. Uh, me being such a small YouTube creator, I can't really afford to do that. I don't know if you can personally afford to do that. Please do that. But otherwise, the protein content test that you do, that can't tell amino spiking, right? Period. They can't tell that. A lot of you already know that. That's fine. Uh, it's fantastic that you know that. Now, uh, coming to amino spiking, I need to talk about what it is. And then I'm going to talk about amino fortification, which a lot of the YouTubers, when I saw the videos, I found that they're actually mis mistaking it as um, amino uh, spiking. Amino fortification is completely different from amino spiking. So let's just get down into that. So um, first of all, we need to understand what is uh, protein content and what are the guidelines. So FDA, Food and Drug Authority of America, they have a guideline. I found FSSAI website. I didn't find any guideline from our uh, Food and Drug Authority. If you have any link, let me know. But I'm going to talk about this because this is also standard, a bunch of important brands we use. And we kind of take this also as a reference. So I think it's not such a bad idea to go for it also. So as per FDA, what is a protein in a protein powder? If it's just pure protein that is coming from full um, protein, like a whey protein or a plant protein, something like that. Or if it's peptides, that is short chains of protein. You've seen many products, they say peptides. Uh, like Ultimate Nutrition, ProStar say peptides, um, Optimum Nutrition say pro peptides, and also Ice Sensation says peptides, and a lot of other, other of them say peptides. These are considered uh, protein sources or protein. You can, what that means is that you can put these and uh, calculate the total protein percentage and put it on the label because that's what you can do. Why is it so? Because these can be used directly. Uh, broken down and used into muscle synthesis. That's why the protein supplements, which are used primarily for muscle synthesis and repair, protein and peptides are considered protein, right? No problem with that. Free form amino acids. Why I said free form? Because it's important. So uh, if you see amino acids, which are peptide bonded, and I made a video on that also, like glutamine peptides, um, that's not a free form amino acid. And it would be considered a peptide because it, it is much capable of helping synthesize muscle than being used for any other purposes. And as per the FDA guideline, only free form, that is only individual um, amino acid molecules, if you're buying those things, putting those in your product, and then you're bumping up the protein content, you're saying, okay, I added 70% of protein, then 10% I added free form amino acid, which is like really low cost amino acid, like lysine and so. Um, then the whole protein content increases to 80%. That's amino spiking. Because you can't do it with this. You can't increase your protein percentage based on free form amino acid. Am I clear? I think I'm clear. If, if you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. And I'll clarify that more. Now, let's understand then what is amino fortification and what is amino spiking and how you can detect that. First of all, there are different ways to detect it and different ways to do this. So, First, you gotta see the amino profile of your protein powder, and that's why it's very important for you to have an amino pro profile in the first place on your protein powder tub or pouch. 
Then you add all this protein together, or add all this amino acid uh, content together, and you get and you get a sum of those, and that becomes let's say twenty five grams. Then see how much of the protein content it said on the label. Is it twenty five grams? If those things are coming together, it's not spiked. Now that's not the whole thing. I'll talk about it, but generally that's the first step to start to see if it's spiked or not. All right. So you're gonna add up the whole amino profile. And then you can see the protein content, and you can see if they match. Then mostly it's not amino spiked. Now, um, how is the fortification then in that case? So the fortification happens if that after this or after this they say like in the supplement facts list you can see protein content 25 gram, and there's this amino profile, and then they say okay plus three grams of let's say creatine. Now this three gram, when you add it, you get 28 grams of protein, right? But in the profile, they're saying 25 gram. Is in the protein content, they're saying 28 gram? If no, if they're saying 25 gram, then you're absolutely fine. Then these guys are actually doing fortification. Some do it with creatine, some do it with glutamine, some do it with some other stuff, depending on what sort of a blend they wanna make, what sort of experiments they have done. So some put creatine because that boosts your protein synthesis to, to some extent. Some put glutamine because it's a nitrogen carrier. So that's again, when you're doing exercise, it drops. So the idea is that it's gonna boost up your nitrogen delivery system if you put glutamine. So those are the reasons they put. That doesn't mean they're um, spiking the product, all right? Now, that's not the whole thing. I get, I get, I guess you got so far, right? Another thing that you gotta watch out for, and this is where it becomes more of an experience. Now, if you're buying uh, whey protein for the first time, you can be fooled very easily because you don't know what to look for, most mostly, because unless you've done a good research, it's absolutely fine, but otherwise, it's uh, difficult. So, what I want you to see is that, look at the amino profile, and let me get one uh, sample for that. Here's an amino profile of ISO sensation, and you're gonna see all these things. Now, go to a website of any other web uh, company, or there are some uh, places where you can actually find standard amino profile for whey protein concentrate and whey protein isolate, stuff like that and uh, you look for this profile and you're gonna see or specifically look at the non-essential or semi-essential amino acids. So this, this one that you see that isolates and leucine, um, lysine and then valine, all these things, these nine, these are essential, right? These are costly stuff. Someone wants to do fortification, I mean, uh, spiking with that, it's difficult. You're gonna look at different things. You're gonna look at um, uh, arginine, really cheap stuff. You're gonna look at some other stuff like Proline, these are cheap stuff. Serine, these are cheap stuff, okay? What you're gonna see is to, or tyrosine. What, what you need to understand is, look closely to those amino acids, the non-essential ones, and see if the value is really too high. So what I'm trying to say is that, let's say arginine is 630 mg in here, like it's not even a gram. Now you're having an isolate protein, which is very difficult to be more um, bioavailable than this one. But let's say that has two grams of arginine. Yes, that's a sure shot pointer that it's probably spiked because two grams of arginine is not coming as a standard profile. So it's probably spiked. It's difficult to say 100% it's spiked or not without doing a test because the moment you challenge the company, um, they're gonna say, do you have a test report? So, but that's the way you can find out as a consumer. Uh, whether arginine is the other thing is that uh, because some companies think that we're so naive we don't know that in this amino acid profile they come and put creatine or so uh, and <laughs> and then they bump up the whole number so that's that's also definitely an open uh, daylight robbery that's going on that happens sometimes and they put it but you know I'm tr trying to understand the difference if someone puts creatine in here and puts the whole amino profile and bump it up that's spiking but if someone adds creatine after that and saying, okay, this is my protein plus creatine this many grams, that's not spiking. They're just fortifying the product and they probably would come out really clean and boastfully about doing that because putting extra creatine costs, right? So these are the pointers that you're gonna look for. So you're first gonna look at the amino acid profile, sum it up, see the protein content, sum it up and see if they match, that's the first thing. See if uh, they have said that, okay, I added three grams of creatine or glutamine, and then they said actually the protein content is 28 gram, 
but the amino profile comes to 25 gram yes it's a sign of pro, uh, amino spiking but if these two come same and then they added three gram extra which is not coming in the calculation then it's amino fortification it's absolutely fine in most cases it's a better protein profile or a Bring a better protein blend, you can say. The other and most sophisticated way to look at it is the amino profile. You got to do a bit more research on that. Look at the cheapo non-essential amino acids and see if they are way more than what it should be. And uh, I think Isosensation 93 is one of the good references. You can go for some other brand also, which you can trust on some international brand, of course, because uh, don't just go for any international brand, right? Go for international brands which are old, which have been selling a product for a long, long time because maybe somebody down the line had tested and did something, right? So that's why it's not just because they're international, but because they're doing the business for a long period of time, right? So that's the, the other thing that you want to see that is there something in this list that's not supposed to be in this amino profile? That's one. Two, are there any cheapo uh, non-essential amino acid which is like bumped up too much? So these are the ways you can detect amino spiking. Fortification is an entirely different thing. Please, I'd request to some of the YouTubers who are doing it, and you might like it or not, what I'm saying, but please don't mislead people. I mean, if, if I know you're probably not doing it intentionally, but if you're saying something, it affects the whole, uh, the way people look at things. And not many people have time to go and do their research. They should actually. But that's why we as YouTube, YouTube creators, it's our responsibility to do the research initially and then put up the info and put proper legitimate links so that people can go do their further research. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, do leave a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and loved ones. And do subscribe to my channel if you feel like. And I thank you a lot for your time and patience to watch this video. Have an awesome life, folks. Ciao.